The male dances on a thick branch on the lower part of a tree, or even sometimes on the forest floor. Extraordinary as this dance is, Tadashi's remaining challenge is to film the magnificent bird of paradise. It means trekking deep into the rainforest. These tropical evergreen forests harbor as many as 11,000 different species of plants. Almost 60% of these are endemic to New Guinea and found nowhere else. The terrain is steep and treacherous. Several times, deep ravines block their path. In other places, they have to hack their way through dense thickets of thorny rattans and lianas. Just as it seems it may be impossible to find their quarry, their luck may be about to turn. We have just heard that people in a remote village have reported seeing a bare patch of ground in the forest. And they're willing to take us there. Perhaps this is the dancing stage of the magnificent bird of paradise. <laughs> Tadashi knows this may be his last chance. He decides to lose no time and asks the local people to show him what they have found. The villagers lead Tadashi deep into the forest. Birds of paradise usually display during the dry season, and it's easy to see why. At last, they find what they've been looking for. A patch of bare earth about four meters square, the dancing stage of the magnificent bird of paradise. It lies in a natural clearing where light can reach the ground. Tadashi believes that its owner must still be around to maintain it, as there are no leaves scattered around the surface. It looks as though it has been swept clean with a broom. The villagers were right. <laughs> now, all Tadashi has to do is wait for the male to come back to his dance floor. Suddenly, he arrives. His plumage is the most extraordinary Tadashi has seen. Brilliant yellow wings, with two long curved plumes emerging from the back.
Like the Laws Parotia, he immediately starts cleaning the earth floor of any debris. First, he removes the leaves with a deft flick of the beak. Then he begins to clear away moss and lichen. Finally, he starts to snip off any leaves which may obscure the light falling on his display ground, often to a height of several meters above the ground. Some courts are maintained for at least three years. Only when the stage is spotless does he try to attract a female's attention by calling from a branch. He continually calls, hoping to attract a female. But luck is not on his side. It's impossible for him to dance when his stage is turned to mud. Both Tadashi and the male must wait for the rains to end. Slash and burn agriculture and commercial logging can completely alter the ecology of the forests. Without tree roots to hold it in place, the thin soil becomes vulnerable to erosion when the rains arrive. Instead of soaking into the ground, the water pours off the mountainsides in torrents. After four days, the rains finally abate. On the first dry morning, Tadashi is waiting in the hide. This time, he doesn't start cleaning the stage, but instead begins to inflate his feathers. There must be a female about. Over the years, 
Females have chosen the males with increasingly ornate feathers as an indication of health and breeding potential. Gradually, the male's plumage and courtship display has evolved to become more and more bizarre and colorful. Darwin believed the birds of paradise show the most extreme form of sexual selection. The male performs this display every day during the breeding season. Finally, the female reveals herself and enters the arena. This is his chance to impress her. Like many birds of paradise, she is quite drab compared to the male. Males do nothing but feed and display. Once they have mated, they leave all the nest building, incubating the eggs, and feeding the chicks to the female. So it is vital that she is well camouflaged. Tadashi is thrilled to have been able to film this display. <laughs> the male constantly keeps his brilliant breast shield exposed towards the female as she flies around him, inflating it and expanding the white ruff at the back of his neck. Tadashi wants to pay a visit to the local village one last time, for without their help, his quest would have been impossible. <laughs> as long as local people continue to believe that spirits reside in the trees, plants, and birds in the rainforests, then these forests will be safe. They have practiced subsistence farming and lived in balance with nature for thousands of years.
But in some parts of New Guinea, things have begun to change. As people come into more frequent contact with outside influences, their connection with the natural world is broken, and they become more likely to damage their environment for economic gain. Commercial logging is one of the main threats to these forests. Poachers often use the new roads to search for birds of paradise to sell illegally. The only way to protect these rainforests and the extraordinary and unique creatures that live there is to protect the way of life of the local people who have been their guardians for so long.